Hey folks, it's Ben. Welcome to this awesome how does this amazing sewing machine video work? I've done a lubrication video on what you need to do to get everything running. Before I button this thing up, let's take a look at the exact details on how it runs. Now, long story short, this one is driven by an electrical motor. That motor plugs into an outlet, obviously, and to a foot pedal that allows its operation. Technically, these would be variable speed, but this one typically seems to only have one at the time. Now, Let's start at the beginning, right? So we've got the main, I'm gonna call it crankshaft, even though I'm sure there's actually a technical term for it. Um, but this gets turned forward and operates the crank throw you see here. This bearing goes, uh, crank throw goes down to the base there and actually drives, I believe, the bobbin. This one here operates the feed dogs and you can control how fast the feed dogs pull by this lever here, if you take a look at it. It has essentially stitch length, and it can go from very short, which they call whatever that measurement is, I don't know what it is, from fine to coarse. And so as you pull it up more, uh, the stitch length gets longer. So, uh, and that controls this cam here. So if I move it all the way up or almost reverse, it moves the cam that turns here to throw either more or less. And so now there's, uh, that looks like more, but uh, it actually controls the throw of this back and forth with that lever right here you see here. And that controls the amount of push back and forth that this actually puts on to the feed dogs. And that's how you control how far it pulls it before the next needle strike comes down. The next lever we have is the stitch width. And that's the zigzag pattern that you see here. And this one's really cool. Right now it's set to essentially straight. So as you see, it doesn't really do much. It controls this part here, right? If I move it to the extreme of the zigzag by moving this lever, it actually moves this foot over. The, can uh, the crankshaft actually drives a gear underneath here that rotates this. So as I pull it now, it moves the whole carriage assembly back and forth. And so if we look at our needle, it goes up and down, over, up and down, over, up and down, over, up and down. Fergus the cat has decided to visit me and I don't need him to, so off he goes. So depending on what you need for a width, you control this essential cam that moves either to none, to all. So, uh, and that controls this rod here, which is connected to the head assembly, which allows it to move back and forth. So. Um, very kind of cool mechanism there for that. And let me, uh, I can run, I'll put it to the extreme and then, yeah, we'll run it and you can see how it moves the head back and forth. So that's that lever. This lever is the needle position and you can have it center, left or right. So. This just takes the whole thing and moves it over. So you can push it and it, uh, because it's in the crisscross stage, let me move it to zero, run it. Center, see now that's the action I was looking for. If you move it left, it takes the whole assembly, and moves it left or right. So it's all bearinged out on this little shaft here. So depending on what you pick is where it moves the needle from. So if you go all the way right and a fat wide stitch, it moves that, it moves that, and it almost kind of, since the left and right is limited by where it can go on the bottom there, it kind of cuts that out. So you really only see it mostly when it's at the zero. And that's a right, and then it moves left. So that's what that lever does, okay? So now we're cooking. The other lever we have is for the actual foot, and that actually engages it into the fabric here and that allows the feet the, the the foot dogs to grab and pull on the fabric here this lever um it actually does two things it releases the spring that pushes down on the foot to put it down and you can control the tension of that by a coil spring up here so by turning this dial you control how hard it pushes down on the fabric so for a lace you don't want it very hard if you're doing like a jean or denim you probably want to push it down pretty good. So, uh, or depending on how thick your fabric is too, you don't want to, you know, if it's thick, you don't need to have as much tension to push down on it. Uh, it also, and I didn't realize this, affects the tensioner 
uh, for the thread. So uh, when you engage the, the foot, it engages the tension as well. So when you release the foot up, it also releases the tension on, so you can just pull string through without having to go through tension on that. Back to our crankshaft, as I call it. When it's running, it does a lot up here. Primarily, it drives this shaft up and down. That's the needle, right? So you can see the needle go up and down. But it also operates through kind of a neat cam mechanism. And let me turn on a light here to allow us to see a little better inside the works here is it also drives a cam to run our thread tension or our thread essentially pulls on the thread and then allows the needle to go down without having to pull on the thread and if you notice it's kind of a very steam locomotive ship pivots down pulls up pivots it's a lot of pivoting and rotating so you can see why all this would need to get lubricated right and it's a swinging action of the machine like it's quite a bit of travel off this and so that mechanism there on the front end of it, and it's counterweighted if you notice, like on the back here, there's just an iron slug right over there. And that's to counter the weight so that when this thing is spinning at full speed, and I ought to hit the pedal, um, it doesn't actually vibrate the machine too bad. So you can see at full speed, it's just a whir of equipment. But it's actually kind of smooth, and that's because it's been balanced there. And as you can see, we're running. That goes back, but our stitch is actually straight, so it looks pretty good. And we've got the spinning there. And for the feed dogs, and for those of you who don't know much about sewing machines, the feed dogs are down there. I think I can pull this plate out. And you can also see the, the bobbin is actually just uh, going back and forth. It's not actually spinning, it's just rotating back and forth. I'll hand turn it here. You can see it goes one way and back and forth. And that's that cam action that you see back here off the main shaft. So, uh, The other cool toy with this is the bobbin um, winder. Uh, and it is pretty cool in terms of there's a clutch here. So if you unengage the clutch, which is uh, turning it uh, counterclockwise, it disengages the drivetrain. So now it just just spins it without spinning the, and you take this wheel and you push it against, actually with that lever there, and it spins this bobbin. And then when you disengage it, it doesn't. So if you spin up your bobbin with your thread, you actually, there's a thread holder here, it comes back over to a tensioner, it comes back over here. And if you move it over, unengage the clutch, hit the button, and it just spins it. And when you're done clockwise, Re-engages the clutch, you disengage the bobbin, and then you're back in business again. So that's the top end of this machine. We've got two shafts that come down, right? We've got the, the crank uh, the uh, connecting rod here, and then the cam that's here. Let's take a look at those below. As my wife was keen to point out, I can also remove the plate that's here <laughs> and kind of show you the feed dog action. If I manually pull it, they come up, they pull the fabric, and now in comes the needle. So they can you can actually control uh, and that's done with this controller right here, how hard it pulls a little bit or a lot. And it goes down, moves forward, comes up, and then pulls the fabric, and then down again, and the stitch comes through. So that's why it's up, pulls, down, needle, up, pulls, down, needle. It needs to be exactly timed, obviously, with our big crankshaft here. So that's kind of a neat um, shot with that. Now let's open it up. So let's hit the power end of the, the sewing machine on the bottom here. These are all rocking mechanisms, so none of them actually spin. Uh, our connecting rod connects here to the shaft, so when I turn the power by hand, you can see that it actually just rocks it up and down. That, of course, rocks this shaft up and down, which then rocks this shaft back and forth, so we're getting a little mechanically complicated here, right? So that goes back and forth, that goes back and forth, and that leads over to drive the bobbin. So this bobbin goes back, and I'll see if I can get the whole shot here, and forth. Back and forth, and that's got to be tied in exactly with the needle to be correct here. And uh, so if you had timing issues, I believe with the bobbin and the thread, the 
the mechanism in here would be to somehow change it. I haven't gotten that far in my awesomeness with sewing machines, but that's exactly how that kind of works. The next is the feed dogs, and they also are timed with the, the speed of the needle. And that deals with this cam here and this cam here. So if we look at our other, uh, the one on the cam upstairs, it actually connects to this shaft. So it goes back and forth very slightly. Comes over here, drives its power through this connection here <laughs> and this connection here up over the top that you see here. And so that rocks the feed dogs back and forth. So this is the back and forth action and this is the up and down action. So uh, as you see, the this is just moves it back and forth slightly. That's the action of the feed dogs pulling it. And as you were to adjust the stitch length, it adjusts how far it, it uh, will pull it. And then up here, and this is actually tied to the drive cam, actually. So the one that drives the bobbin also drives this mechanism. <laughs> and that's the up and down. And that's where we can, uh, there's actually an adjustment here that I haven't talked about yet. This adjusts the height of the dogs as well. So if you wanted to get them totally out, you could screw it down or screw it up. Um, and so by turning that, it turns this little knob here and you can see where, <laughs> it's like a steam engine again, uh, by turning this, it turns that lever, that adjusts this, and that adjusts how much up and down it actually does. So if you wanted it full up, that's great. And if you wanted it full down, it's like that. So if I run that, it's a little bit, if I swing it around, in one of those directions it looks like you get a lot more play with that setting there so this actually controls the height of the dogs mechanically like so this controls the up and down of the dogs it's driven off the cam oh i'm sorry the connecting rod i call it and then the cam actually drives the dogs back and forth so it's quite a complicated machine under here for nothing that spins it's just all rotation based off the the main shaft spinning up here and the levers that are coming down through here I'm sure new machines are variants of this, but they're not going to be as uh, heavily built. So let me hit the gas pedal here. Um, so you can see this thing at speed. Um, it moves pretty fast and you can understand the need for oil. The up and down that you see right here. The bobbin looks like it's spinning, but it's not. It's rotating back and forth. And just the back and forth of everything. And the dogs right there going up and down. And the needle working. So it all works together to create a machine that sews fabric. If you've got any questions on this, please feel free to let me know. Um, if I didn't explain something clearly enough, I'm going to sell this unit hopefully at some point in time, but I'm pretty sure I've got others uh, to answer with. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to my channel, whatever channel you saw this on, there'll be a link to subscribe to. And uh, like my other channel, redbarnhomestead.com, or redbarnhomestead, I'm not dot com, um, if you want to subscribe and see more sewing machine videos. Um, and if, like I said, questions, ask them. Comments if you like the video. And I hope you guys have a great day. And this is a really cool machine. It's a 60s unit, so it's all metal. Awesome. <laughs>